Hi. This one you're going to need a strap, some blocks, maybe a bolster, um, and we'll get started here. We're just, it's two different poses. We're going to get stretchy. So I've got my um, mat at an angle here. You can set it up facing the camera, whatever you like. We're going to take a straddle fold, just a straddle stretch, right? We're going to get in the backs of our legs. Don't need the strap right away, but probably the blocks. So you're going to bring your feet just as wide as not as wide as you can, right? Some of us will end up in big, huge splits. But if you were to bring your arms out, right, your wrist would drop down to your ankle, something like that, and you'll be able to switch it around. Give a little bend in the knees so you're not locking, and you're gonna just start to reach down, reach down, reach down, maybe squat a little bit, and you're gonna find the blocks. So you're gonna be able to determine how deeply you come into this. Maybe your hands on blocks, this is plenty. Maybe it's actually really hard to reach the blocks in which case you bring them up, right? And if that's really hard, you're gonna get a bolster and maybe set your blocks on there. Maybe you get a chair in front of you and just coming out halfway, right? You feel a lot of it in the backs of your legs. And this is plenty, right? You can even stretch your arms out on the chair and take this nice long fold. Even hands at a wall, if that's where you're practicing, if you've got that kind of a space in your home, um, hands to the wall, and stretching the backs of your legs would be fine here too. I'm gonna to lower a little bit myself, get a little bit deeper, or get a bit, little bit um, lower. If you're coming down lower, you wanna to try to stay out of your wrists, right? So if you're up here, your wrists are gonna take it out a lot. You're gonna to have to do a lot of work to keep adjusting, maybe fists, right? So you don't crank into and put a lot of weight on your wrist. You don't wanna do that. I'm gonna come down onto my forearms and I invite you to join me there. So notice when you do this, sometimes the seat goes way back, right? We want to pull forward so that our hips are in line with our ankles, right? Not way, way back behind them, but forward. You want to bring the, the weight into the front of the feet. And here, one of the nice things about having the blocks is that it gives you a space for your head to drop down into. You don't have to do that. You can be all the way on the floor. Right. We're going to give ourselves a few minutes, actually. This first minute is just to allow us to find some breath as the body tries to adjust to being here. Right? You're going to feel in your feet. Right? For many of us, we start to push out into the outer ankles. It's like the position where we, sp we uh, sprain our ankles. So what I want you to do is find the four corners of your feet, ball the big toe, ball the pinky toe, you can lift your toes a little bit, inner and outer heel, right? All of those four points at the same time are moving down and all of a sudden you start to feel more muscles in your legs, right? You're going to lift through the arches, lift through the front of the legs, maybe even a little the side, right? So you're lifting up away from caving into the outside of the foot. And you lift up through the inseam of the legs. Lift the sit bones away from the heels. And you start to maximize the stretch of the backs of the legs. The back channels of the body, right? Head dropping down. in your breath. Notice in your feet, in your legs, where you push too hard, you stretch too far, right? And try and balance out, right? We only need to stretch from where our tightest spot is, right? Once we feel some resistance, that's enough. We're going to stay there and breathe and pause and lengthen from there. We're not going to force ourselves way beyond that point, right? We can just kind of approach the edge. You can hang out at the edge, but we don't want to go past the edge. If you need to come up a little bit more, come up a little bit more, right? For this last minute or so, if you can come deeper in, lengthening the spine, notice, of course, if you're
curling into it, right? You're reaching your upper back, your shoulder blades are spread apart rather than sliding down your back and the spine is long. You need to come up and adjust that, right? Because you're just going to feel it in your lower back if your tail is kind of dropping. And you can bend your knees any amount, right? You're still stretching. If that's where there's a lot of tightness in your body, then just bend. Do feel this in the lower back. Start to come up in stages, right? Lift yourself up a little bit. Give yourself some support. Take three breaths. Maybe the feet start to come a little closer together. Come up a little higher, right? Gradually coming out just in stages. And nestle the feet a little closer. Give yourself a drink. Bend a little deeper. And then roll yourself. Move the ankles around, move the legs around in any way that feels good to kind of bring some blood flow. Again, when we pull something nice and taut, right, and, and lengthen in the muscles, when we let go and let them come back to a new resting length, we, the blood flow comes rushing back in. So we'll switch that around a little bit, move it around, and then come down eventually when you're ready, either sitting on blocks, sitting on your heels, sitting on a bolster whatever you like, getting comfy. And this time we're going to use our strap. So the tops of the feet are pressing down and back. If you're at a wall, you want to move away from the wall because our hands are going to go behind us. So find a comfortable seat. This is a super long strap, so I'm going to double mine up. If you don't have a yoga strap, grab a belt, grab a pair of jeans, grab a towel, anything that doesn't stretch. You want it to, you want your hands to come out really nice and wide, at least twice as wide, more than twice as wide, maybe even, of um, your body, your torso, your shoulders, okay? So you're going to pull on the strap, like you could snap it in half. You're going to keep pulling, pulling, pulling. Then on an inhale, you're going to lift up. We're going to pause here and find a straight spine. So the ribs are going to come in, the tail's going to go down, you can even turn the pinkies forward a little bit to let the arms rotate, right, as they start to lift higher than the shoulders. And then from there, keep those ribs in, keep the crown of the head lifting, and let the hands go behind you, opening up, maybe rotating the arms again, so now the thumbs are closer to the body. Inhale, open and lift. Exhale, down in front. Inhale, So we're trying to hold everything steady, except the movement of the arms in the shoulder girdle. So if you happen to be too close, right, for your shoulder range of motion, you're gonna end up with the arms bent, with the ribs popping out, lots of different funky things happening. So you're just gonna bring your hands wider, right? Bring them wider, so you lift, you maybe just barely clear the head, and that's okay, and you come down. If this is, enough, and this is really easy, you're going to bring your hands closer together. This is the movement, and we're just going to keep doing this for a couple of minutes. This is something you can do watching TV. Oop, that's even too tight. You can do this watching TV. You can do this on a break right before or after a meal. A few minutes of this a couple times a week. It's going to make a really big difference in the mobility of the shoulders. And the mobility of the shoulders is going to affect how you hold plank, 
how you sit up straight, how you type, how you hold downward facing dog, how you move in and out of your vinyasa, chaturangas, right? We're letting the arms rotate a little bit as they lift and lower. And we're isolating the space in between the shoulder blades. Let your breath work with the movement, inhaling as you lift, exhaling as you go down and front, inhaling as you lift, exhaling as you go down and back. And you just go at your own pace, right? You can go a lot faster or a lot slower than me, but do it with your breath, right? Not just whipping through it and certainly not holding your breath. Arms are as straight as you can get them without locking the elbows, right? Those of us who hyperextend, we don't want to do that. We want to keep a little bend so we can rotate the arms in the shoulder sockets. We can rotate the forearms a little bit. Nothing is locked. The breath is moving. The ribs stay here. Right? So we're not locking those in either. We're using our breathing muscles and our awareness in the torso to keep all of that still instead of popping out. Any more rounds? Start to feel your shoulders heat up. Last two. And you can, of course, before you move on to any other segment, any other stretching, any other strengthening. If you want to just pause and do a few more rounds, you're welcome to. I'm just going to set the strap aside. And we're just going to breathe a little bit into the shoulders, move them around a little bit. A little stretch. And you can feel the shoulders heated up, right, from lifting and lowering of the head. Give yourself a pause. Close the eyes at least five or six breaths so that you can choose what comes next without rushing into it. And let it come from, that decision come from the 